Bunny costume. Really? No. Wow. <laughs> I, I, I can't use the same hat the same one two years in a row. So anyways, how to find the vertical and horizontal asymptotes or the slant and um, asymptote and the x and y intercepts. The first thing I'm going to do is I want to go and see what are the x and y intercepts because that's going to be kind of the easiest thing for me to start off with. So first thing I'm going to say, all right, find the um, x intercept. To find the x-intercept, one thing you know is at the x-intercept, we have y equals 0. So therefore, our you know, function is, is going to be 0. So we're going to have 0 equals 2x squared minus 5x plus 5 all over x minus 2. Therefore, now, um, to go ahead and solve for this, what I determine is I'd say, all right, well, i got to multiply by x minus 2 on both sides. And therefore, I get 0 equals 2x squared minus 5x plus 5. And if I remember correctly, yes. So if I remember correctly, this is not factorable. When I go ahead and use the quadratic formula, or when I just go ahead and finish, what I notice is it's going to have imaginary roots. So therefore, it's not factorable. So therefore, my x-intercept does not exist. I don't have one. Let's check out the y-intercept. Y-intercept is now, when it crosses the y-axis, we know that x equals 0. So now I'm going to plug in everything where, um, so now f of x is when x equals 0. So it's going to equal 2 times 0 squared minus 5 times 0 plus 5 all over 0 minus 2. And all through all this, I end up getting that my... Um, y-intercept, or across the y-axis, is when y equals a negative 5 halves. Because that cancels out, that cancels out, that cancels out. You're just left with 5 over negative 2. I can't see like negative I'll try to be walking on the other side. All right, so now um, let's go ahead and look at our asymptotes. Well, we can only have a slant or our horizontal, and we'll look at our, if I go and look at my vertical, um, the first thing I need to look at the vertical is what's going to be the zeros on my, my d of x, right? So to find this, I need to find when is d of x going to equal 0. So for the vertical, so for a vertical asymptote, I'm going to say my d of x, my denominator polynomial, has to equal 0. So I say 0 is equal to x minus 2. Well, this makes it pretty easy. It's going to be x equals 2 for my vertical asymptote. Now, um, now for my uh, now for my um, horizontal, I go ahead and look at it. And if you guys remember what we looked at when we have our when we have an equation, or I'm sorry, a rational e rational function, what we look at. Yeah, two on both sides. No, I'm talking about on the x-axis. Okay. So when you go ahead and look over this, you notice that my of my leading degree is higher than a degree of this leading term. So therefore, a horizontal asymptote does not exist. So what I need to do is now I need to search for, well, is there maybe a slant asymptote? And the way to determine if the slant asymptote is, you look at what is the, what is the difference between um, the degree on the numerator and the denominator. And if it has a difference of 1, then we can find out what the slant intercept is. So the way that we find that out is by lovely long division. However, I got even luckier because I actually have something that's in the form of x minus, uh, we'll use an x minus k. So therefore, I can actually use synthetic division, which is even going to make this even better. So horizontal does not exist because my, at my exponent up here is greater than my exponent down here. So horizontal does not exist. However, our slant, our slant exponent, is, or our slant, I'm sorry, asymptote, is going to be when I divide this. So I'll use synthetic division of 2 negative 5, and 5. So therefore, I drop down the 2. Multiply by 2, I get 4. Negative 1. 2 times negative 1 becomes negative 2. I get 3. Remember, 3 is going to be my, my remainder. So therefore, here, if I write this in as an expression, I get 2x minus 1. So my slant asymptote is going to be 2x minus 1. So therefore, when I go ahead and graph this, it's actually the line of 2x minus 1 is where the asymptote is going to be. Where's 3? Right here. 
What do you mean the three? The three is just the remainder. That's not going to be a part of the asymptote. It's just actually going to be, it's just, because um, remember, remember, if this was a zero, then that would be, that's your thing. So always your last number is your remainder. Yeah. Right? Unless it was a zero, unless you had a zero, then that means your, that number is your constant. They divided it. So, yeah, we just divided it in to go and get our, 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 uh, our, uh, don't you divide our least value polynomial. So your thing would be 2x minus 1 divided by 3. That's what they normally do with it. And it would be, no, like you said, what this is written as is 2x, you're right, 2x minus 1, and then 3 over x minus 2, right? Or was it uh, x minus 2, right? Right? Mm -hmm. That's what you're saying that the polynomial is. And that is correct. And all I'm saying is, out of this, this is your answer, correct. All I'm saying is, out of your answer, that's your y-intercept. So only take this part to be your, I'm sorry, your slant asymptote, not your y-intercept. Only take this part to be your, your slant asymptote. You're not, you're, not con, um, you're not concerned with the remainder, okay? So that's how you find the vertical, horizontal, slant, and x and y-intercepts.